Hello students my name is Ms Antra Bhattacharya currently i am working as an assistant professor in computer science and engineering department of GH Rai Soni Institute of Engineering and Technology Nagpur today i am here to give a brief introduction about the subject information and cyber security basically cyber security is the process to protect your computer hardware software from unknown resources these are nothing but techniques to protect your computer from attacks basically this subject is divided into six units the first unit deals with the basics of cryptography this unit deals with why there is a need to introduce principles of security which is nothing but the ethical legal and professional issues of computer security next again in this unit the second part is divided in osi architecture which deals with the attacks services and mechanisms of security next again this unit consists of the encryption techniques which are nothing but the classical encryption techniques which helps us to understand how to protect your simple message in an encrypted form so that it is unknown to the attackers now unit 2 deals with the symmetric encryption algorithms basically computer security deals with two types that is symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption symmetric means one secret key is shared between both the sender and receiver who want to communicate with each other asymmetric deals with wherein public and private both the keys will be used by both the sender as well as the receiver now unit 2 basically deals with the actual algorithms which are used in practical organizations for example des as idea etc now again unit 2 will also give us a brief idea how to manage the key while sending a message from sender to receiver the third unit basically deals with the asymmetric algorithms which are nothing but rsa diffie hellman etc now the basic difference between symmetric and asymmetric is symmetric deals with the plain text cipher text type of messages wherein block cipher and stream cipher techniques will be used but in asymmetric basically numeric methods are used to solve the problems rsa diffie hellman these are the basic and most popular algorithms which are used for encryption and decryption purpose unit 3 will also deal with the diffie hellman exchange algorithm which is nothing but how to securely exchange only a key between two users now unit 4 will basically deal with message and hash functions or you can call it as authentication functions the authentication functions are nothing but md5 algorithm then smime algorithm etc again unit 4 will also deal with how to manage the key when it comes to asymmetric type of algorithms so for this we will have to study pki that is public key infrastructure then what do you mean by digital certificates what are the basic authentication certificate procedures to protect your system etc now unit 5 will deal with firewall network security that is what do you mean by intrusion detection system then ipsec tls ssl protocols etc unit 5 will basically deal with these which i have already explained now we will come to the last unit that is unit 6 unit 6 basically deals with electronic mail security that is today's world maximum communication is done through emails so for email how will you protect your mail or messages from attackers so for this we will study pgp smim algorithms next what are the basic techniques to protect your online transactions like chip card transactions smart card so for this we will have to study what are the software vulnerabilities for example phishing attacks then buffer overflow etc now let me start with basic introduction of network security network security is nothing but to in today's world maximum data is transferred electronically as i have already told you now in earlier days files were protected by keeping it in lockers because there was no invention of computers 
slowly gradually there was invention of computers wherein maximum data was kept in the computers but there was no way to protect the system or messages which you have kept so the advent of computer security arrived why there is a need for this now data cannot be kept in a raw form it needs to be encrypted in some other form now basically cryptography deals with certain techniques and there are some what do you say uh, messages like what do you mean by plain text what do you mean by cipher text what do you mean by encryption what do you mean by decryption so plain text is nothing but the original message which is sent from the sender to receiver cipher text means how will you convert your plain text to cipher text that is you are converting original message to encrypted form by using certain encryption techniques next is encryption method now encryption is conversion of your plain to cipher and decryption method is converting your cipher to plain now next this is all about encryption decryption but what do you mean by network security suppose there is a situation where there are two users user a and b user a will be called as sender and user b will be called as receiver now in network security the basic steps are first the sender will generate an original message which he or she wants to send it to the receiver a that is sender will first apply a certain secret transformation on the original message now what is secret transformation secret transformation is nothing but applying an any random encryption algorithm on your original plain text now after applying secret transformation there is always a need of secret key which needs to be appended to your original message now what is a secret key secret key is nothing but you can call it a coded message which is appended and which is known only to the sender and receiver in case of symmetric encryption now the original plain text you have applied secret transformation on it with the help of a secret key now the job is to transmit this original message to the receiver over a network now when there is a question of network obviously you will have to use a certain protocol so the basic protocol which is implemented is tcp ip through the help of tcp ip the sender can send the message over a network to the receiver now there is a need of third party in certain cases suppose there is a situation where user b and a both are unable to trust to trust each other now in such situation there is a need of a third party and that third party should be a trusted third party now the responsibility of trusted third party is to supply the secret key to both the sender as well as receiver now there are two situations either user a will transmit the message directly to b or a and b both will rely on trusted third party to send the message suppose third party is involved so the procedure will be sender a will originate a plain text and will apply secret transformation but the key will be supplied by the third party after receiving the key from the third party the sender will apply secret transformation along with the help of secret key and the plain text will be converted into cipher text now next once the key is received over the network using tcp ip protocol the sender will send the message to the receiver now on the receiver side again the same steps will be performed which was performed on the sender side so on the receiver side as soon as the receiver receives the cipher text the first step will be to perform secret transformation now on the sender side secret transformation is converting your plain to cipher and on the receiver side secret transformation will indicate converting your cipher text to plain text again since on the sender side a secret key was used same key will be used on the receiver side also to decrypt the message after the secret key is applied now finally the receiver will receive a simple plain text which was sent from the sender to receiver this is the basic procedure of network security 
Now comes another technique which is network security access model which is a part of network security model. Now network security access model is nothing but suppose there is an opponent who wants to extract the message which is transmitted from A to B. Now the message that is the opponent can be either in the form of a human being or it can be in the form of a software. Now human beings as opponents are nothing but attackers and the software which is treated as an opponent is nothing but virus or you can call it Trojan horse etc. Suppose an opponent is successful in attacking your system. So the next step will be the opponent will have to face the gatekeeper function. Now what is a gatekeeper function? It is nothing but a firewall. Firewall is nothing but you need to protect your system. We all have laptops, we all have computers and we know how the firewall works. It is nothing but a security layer which helps your system from attackers. Suppose in this case the opponent is again successful in intruding your system. So after it passes the gatekeeper function, now it will try to attack the tools and processes of your system. So for that, the best procedure is to protect your system by implementing a antivirus software. Antivirus software, we all know that this is basically implemented in your system to protect the tools, information, processes, etc. So this is basically network security access model wherein the opponent will first have to pass the gatekeeper function. Suppose it is successful in intruding the gatekeeper function also, then the next step will be it will directly attack on your system. So the final step is to protect your system by implementing an antivirus software. So basically the network security model and network security access model deals with four basic steps. First step is decide which algorithm you want to implement for converting your plane to cipher. That is nothing but secret transformation. Second is decide what kind of secret key you want to append with your message. Next is you have to decide which protocol to implement for transferring your message from sender to receiver. Next is, next and final step is how will you protect your system from opponent. So these are four basic design considerations when it comes to network security model. Now there are certain principles of security which you want to implement. First and basic principle of security is authentication. Now what do you mean by authentication? This is nothing but suppose user A wants to send a message to user B. That is message will contain, you can say that A wants to send dollar hundred to B. Now B should make sure that A is an authenticated user that is a legal user. Legal means verified user. Next basic principle is authorization. Authorization means again it is part of authentication. Authentication is legal user. Authorization means somebody will have to verify whether this user actually exists in the network or not. Third basic principle is property. That is who is actually owning the information and who is transferring the information. So property is nothing but you can call it data integrity. Integrity means you have to verify whether the same message is transmitted from the sender or receiver or not. For example, again I will take the $100 example. If user A wants to send $100 to user B, then data integrity means $100 should exactly reach to user B. Suppose $1000 reaches user B, that means that there is some kind of security breach in the system. Last is non-repudiation. Now this means that suppose there are two users, user A and user B. Suppose after user A transfers $100 to user B, but user B somehow denies that I have not received $100 from user A. Or after transferring $100 to user B, A denies that no, I did not send such kind of information to B. So in such cases, there is a dispute even though B has received $100 and even though A has sent $100 to B, both are somehow denying that no, I did not receive $100 from A and 
A is denying no I did not send dollar 100 to B. So this type of situation is known as non repudiation. So to protect your system from non repudiation it is very important to check whether the message originated is actually authenticated user or not. So basically the four principles of security are first is authentication, second is authorization, third is data integrity and fourth is non repudiation. Now we will move to security services, security attacks and security mechanisms. These are nothing but implemented in your OSI architecture model. The security attacks are nothing but mechanisms or procedures to attack your system. Now security attacks are of two types. First is active attack and second is passive attack. Active attacks are nothing but those types of attacks which actually harm your system and passive attacks are nothing but those type of attacks which do not harm your system. So in passive attack basically the attackers just observe what kind of messages are transmitted from user A to user B and in case of active attack actually the original message is somehow changed to some other message which the attacker wants to send. Now passive attacks can be of two types. First is release of message content and second is traffic analysis. Release of message content means the attacker will just observe that over a network what kind of messages are transmitted from the sender to receiver. Now this in this case the attacker will just observe how many packets are getting transmitted, what kind of messages are sent, at what time the maximum number of messages are sent etc. And in case of traffic analysis, the packet transmission count will be observed by the attacker. So next is active attack. Again active attack since I have already told you that it is nothing but you have to simply judge that whether the system is getting harmed or not. Now active attacks are of four types. First is masquerading. Masquerading means user A is sending a message to user B. These two are authenticated users in a network, but there is an attacker suppose which is called as user C. Now user C actually wants to send a message to user B, but C is actually pretending to be user A and sending the message to B. B is thinking that I have received the message from user A which is an authenticated user. But actually user C is posing as user A and sending that message to user B. So B is not knowing that sender A is actually sender C but not sender A. So this is masquerading. So what masquerading means is pretending to be someone else and hiding one's identity. Second type of active attack is replay of messages. Replay of messages is repeating the message again and again so that there is some kind of blockage in the system. Third type of attack is denial of service attack. Even though the user is an authenticated user, still there is some kind of problem while logging into your account. The best example is Gmail. At the max, you are given three attempts. Even if you fail to enter your system after three attempts, even though you are typing the correct password, still your system is not allowing you to access your emails. So this type means that there is some kind of denial of service attack that takes place on your system. Fourth and last type is modification of messages. Modification is nothing but inserting a new message or adding some extra bits to your message. Then deletion, deletion means removing certain original text from your plain text or you can modify that is existing message can be changed to some other message. So basically four types are mass curating, replay of messages, modification of messages and last is denial of service attack. So if you want to differentiate finally between active and passive attack, the basic difference between the two is Active actually harms your system, passive in this case the attacker only observes the system. Second is you have to write the types of attacks that is what are the types of active attacks, what are the types of passive attacks. Third is 
you have to identify out of these two which is easy to detect and which is easy to prevent obviously active as it is actually harming the system so it is easy to detect why it is easy to detect because there is some kind of modification in your original message but in case of passive it is very difficult to detect because the attacker is just observing the system fourth is out of these two which is easy to prevent now in passive since we know that the attacker is just observing the system so it is better to take precautions so precautions are nothing but sending your packets or your messages over the network in encrypted form and active attacks are very difficult to prevent because we don't know at what point the attacker is going to harm your system so basically these are the two types next is security services security services are nothing but the mechanisms with the help of which we can protect our system and the third type is security mechanisms now security mechanisms can be data integrity data authentication non repudiation notarization etc now authentication as i've already told you it is nothing but legal users in a network data authentication in this you need to identify peer entity peer entity means how many systems are attached to each other over a lan network and who is the actual originator of the message next is data integrity again the message should be sent to the receiver in an original form these are some of the security mechanisms security services are digital signature encipherment digital signature means the actual signature which you do manually that signature is converted in the form of bits over the network second is encipherment encipherment are encryption techniques which are used for converting your simple message into unreadable form now security services mechanisms can be of two types pervasive and simple pervasive means which are not applicable to any particular osi system model or you can say osi layer and next next is simple simple means it will be actually implemented on particular osi model that is layers so in this case security mechanisms since they are of two types accordingly the mechanisms will be divided I have already told you data integrity digital signature encipherment these are some types of security mechanisms so today i gave you a brief introduction about network security model i have also discussed about the four uh, six basic units of rtmnu syllabus in the next lecture i will discuss the basic classical encryption techniques how to solve the problems thank you